Now, if I'm to understand Ms. Rand, the show helped to close an emotional gap, going from rote education to what some might consider an almost spiritual connection to the sexuality of not only your listeners, but yours as well. I think so. And I think that's something you can only get from education when you have contact with people and when you're getting feedback from people. Um, if you're out there in this educational void and you're putting your work out, it might be really great work. Um, and you might be doing some really great education. But the part that I have found matters to me is hearing back from people and getting their feedback and finding out how the education affects their lives. And really, I mean, you're right. We are, it feels like sometimes building a community. And I feel like I feel lucky to be part of that community of people who are interested in sex and want to talk about it. And so they come to our forums or they foster, you know, alliances like you calling us for an interview because then <laughs> we got to know about Lady Jade too. Or challenging me to a topic on your show. There you go. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you even responded. But let's talk <laughs> of relationships. How have they changed since the podcast? My wife is less ashamed of me than she was when I started this thing. <laughs> <laughs> she was, you know. Now you were married before the podcast. Yes, I was married. And I think that I embarrassed her from time to time from just talking about sex. Then I did the show, which embarrassed her more. And then we, I started getting letters from people saying that our show had helped them. And she felt better about it. And then with every step of legitimacy she became less embarrassed and that she saw that it was a, a value to, um, to our listeners and it was, you know, value to what I was, what I'm trying to do is just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so she's less ashamed of me. That's how my relationship has changed. Any changes in the boudoir, so to speak? Well, we get a lot of free sex toys now. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe our frequencies gone up of, of trying things that maybe we wouldn't have picked out of a catalog, but it comes free in the mail, and well, what the hell, i got to stick that in my ass, too. You know? <laughs> Rick? I've actually had two kind of big changes. The first being um, an elimination of guilt that I've felt a lot with sexual encounters with um, my partners. Uh, I've, I've always kind of tried to been kind of closed off just because of the way things have gone for me in the past. I've always just kind of tried to keep a barrier and be a little more reserved with my emotions. Um, but I've realized kind of through doing this and a lot of the negotiations that we talk about on the show and applying them to my life, um, it's created fantastic sex for me and it's created a lot of intimacy and a lot of like personal security and confidence in who I am. Um, I've also mm -hmm. become less vulvophobic, which excites me. <laughs> it yes, excites me Rick. too. <laughs> yes, we are all eager to hear the continuing saga of your conversion, courtesy of Coochie. Yes, yes, the gossip is, <laughs> is spreading like wildfire. We're yes. going to leave people in suspense for a little bit longer. <laughs> now, Rick, when you say guilt, do you mean due to your sexual orientation or guilt to the overwhelming sex negative culture? I guess in guilt in the sense of that I am, as Coochie says, slutty. <laughs> and I felt bad about that. I would have encounters with people and they were pretty... Slutty? Slutty. <laughs> <laughs> but I would feel bad about it afterwards. And I really just kind of took ownership of that and said, you know what, I, I am slutty and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the fact that I like to have sex with lots of different people and as long as I do that safely and responsibly that's the most important part and I think in learning that I've also learned probably one of the most empowering things that I think a lot of gay men are losing um, is that it's okay to be slutty it's okay to be promiscuous but you shouldn't feel bad about it and you shouldn't all of a sudden demonize it and then feel like you are a bad person therefore maybe you don't need to take the precautions that you normally would like wearing condoms and you should also do it in an ethical manner. Yes, and in an ethical manner. <laughs> Rick is an ethical slut. Coochie, how have your life and your relationships I've changed? I've learned about all sorts of crazy, wacky sex stuff that I love uh, that I <clears throat> probably would not have sought out as eagerly um, had I not been doing it in the name of research for the show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Have there been any negative ramifications from your involvement with the show? We're all busy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel like I am juggling chainsaws in one hand and water balloons filled with napalm in the other. Sometimes. Uh, it's a busy job. It's a busy... It's, it's a lot of time to do this, but it, it's, it's one of those labor of love kind of things that uh, you do because you love to do it. And um, we take long breaks. Well, having only 20 viewers, I can definitely relate, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. This is my half-brother, Max. Please don't encourage him. Hi, Max. Jay, what's going on in here? As you well know, I'm interviewing the Sexist Fun cast. Sexist Fun, huh? Did you have a question, or do you just want to ogle my guests? Oh, yeah, right. Uh, perhaps you ladies can help me with this one. Let's say that one of your listeners has a long-distance girlfriend, and things have been going great, but he'd like to, you know, take things to the next level. How do you suggest he go about doing that? Can we make the assumption that by take things to the next level, we mean intercourse, marriage, engagement? I, uh, Are you talking about an emotional level or a sexual level? A sexual Definitely sexual, uh, but we like an emotional thing, too. Where are we right now? Is it second base, or...? Um, let's say rounding first. I'll decide into second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And we, and we want to get to second base and beyond. Yes, please. Well, I think you need to do some work even before she gets there to build up intimacy with her. I'm assuming it's a her. I shouldn't. Um, but I, I don't know bonk. Girlfriend. No, it's her. Okay, her. it's a her. Definitely um, her. So I think you need to um, have a lot of maybe phone conversations, emails, have a lot of contact there, build up some intimacy, and maybe even have some discussions about what you both want to happen when you have the visit. Because visits can be short. You know, when you have that discussion, you're going to have a bigger chance of actually getting what you want rather than just hoping and then the last hour before you have to get to the airport trying to rush something and having it be awkward. And then she'll be able to tell you her any limitations that she has, any stipulations. You can hash all of that out before you even get there. So then by the time you physically are in the same place, then you're just ready to have fun. <laughs> and you're more likely to know whether or not she's crazy. <laughs> yes, this is, this is also a valid point. Um, because if she's going to flip out about anything or if she has unrealistic expectations, those are going to come out during those conversations. Wow. Thanks. I'm going to get to work right now. <laughs> <laughs> good, good luck to your, your friend. <laughs> yeah, Max, your friend would be lucky. Any, any girl would be lucky to get to second base with your friend. You know, I do believe that's the longest that any woman has spoken to Max in one time in his life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Didn't know you were having your support group meeting in here. Everyone, I'd like to introduce Miss Juliet too. Juliet, this is the cast from Sex is Fun. Sex is fun? Who came up with that idea? Did you have a question? Yeah, I do. Is too much masturbating unhealthy? Okay, uh, here's the answer. Uh, it doesn't matter how much you're doing it, even if it is four times a day, as long as you're able to get the things done in life... You see that, that loser? Done. Even if the perverts say your face is going to freeze like that. 